9.46. Clean the buffet. Fire's out. Plate of firewood. Not provided by us, but uh, provided by the estate manager, Alistair. That pops around a couple of times during the day, which is much appreciated. I've left some water in the kettle, filled that up just in case someone wants to come in. It's just been filled. Electric's off. Floor's been swept. Benches are clean. Nothing untidy, everything all tidy away. Right, brilliant, brilliant stop. Uh, Corey Holly Buffet. And the name outside, which I can't pronounce, so I'm closing the door. That one is uh, it's Gaelic. I was chatting to Alistair, the estate manager, and he says, yeah, it's Gaelic, it says Corey Holly. <laughs> well, that answers that thing. Beautiful day. Just uh, me, the dogs, and a lady called Natalie that's originally from South Africa but now living in York. Stop night, we had a beautiful fire, good conversation. She just left. I've packed all my last bits, I've got to get the dogs loaded, and then we're setting back off. Where I'm pitching tonight, I haven't a clue. I don't want to go too far. 10 miles is just about enough for Stella, so if I try and push around to HL, that's another about two, three miles. So I'm going to have to think about it. I've got to find some of the pitch. Whereas tomorrow I'd like to go up Kingbrick and have a look around Kingbrick. But we'll figure that one out. I don't know. As I'm pondering along, I'll try and decide what we're doing. It's a nice way to do it. Um, it's good to use the boffies. I mean, I, yeah, I don't mind pitching the tent, but when they're clean, tidy, got electricity, uh, got wood provided, you'd be a fool to pitch your tent out here and stay outside when you've got everything for you. So it's been a godsend this uh, few days. All the boffies are just providing us what we need. You know, it saves erecting tents, getting all the gear, sorting the dogs out, you know what I mean? So I'll use it while I've got it. Right, I've got to get these loaded and we've got to get on. The boffy is just behind them trees, behind that first stick. To the left of that little pond or mini tarn. Decent track coming all the way up, but it's all uphill, of course. And it's windy, whichever I want, but it's going to be wind noise for you. What views, eh? And glorious weather again. Stunning. across here when the water's really low not a problem but there is a bridge just there and you just walk around it's not a problem but if the river is in spate I think you wouldn't get any chance of getting across this look at how wide it is and how much rock has been moved but we go follow this track that weaves and weaves and goes round and then goes up towards the Pass of what they call it, Balak, Balak, <laughs> Balak. <laughs> I don't know. I'm, I'm not Scottish.
was a scramble. Just got to go with this little brow here. And we're on the level then. Towards the gate in the cane. that's your target now normally you go down this dodgy slope and climb in and sorry see me out of it on the other side or you'll be going through the tussocks and bogs on this, this side the eastern side but if you follow this track it goes all the way winds then it goes around that little see this little mound in front of us it goes around that and then straight to the bridge I know that because I nearly took the wrong route earlier Brilliant. So that saved me so much time. So you're safer up here. Yes, it's boggy, but it's boggy down there. And it's very dangerous on that slope. You're literally going up to go over and it's just, you're putting a lot of graft in. This way you're putting no hard work in and it'll be quicker. So it's up to you, but I don't know which one I choose. Sorry, I told you the wrong mound. I <laughs> realize, pointing out the big one. That's the little mound across. I go round. 
this track will lead you and it leads you to the bridge there. Sorry about that, make sure I get it right. There's other footprints here as well, so other people have been doing exactly the same. But I haven't, I don't think it's common knowledge. The other thing is, if you come down on the western side, which is left hand as you're coming down, when that river is high, people are having problems crossing it. You come this side, onto the eastern side, on your right hand side, follow this stalker's track vehicle tracks, and uh, there's no river to cross. So you don't have to worry about that issue. But obviously in summer, you ain't got that problem. Again, coming down here after a few more months, with the weather drying out a bit more, this track will even be better. So, I, I suggest you do it. It's saving so much time. It's much easier as well. Track, stalkers, uh, vehicle track. There's a break in the fence. We dodged the bog. The bridge is ahead. Up down there, you two. Here. Behind me. Behind. Behind. So I make sure dogs don't go near the edge. There's a drop off about only about 20, 30 feet, but it's enough to cause them a problem. And there you go. There's the bridge that leads into the woods, rather than going all the way over that lot. Whew. Much easier. Back at base camp. Hopefully the wind ain't making too much noise. <sighs> Been a hot one today. We got down off the pass and there was just no breeze. Now there's a breeze, but there was no breeze and it was cooking. I'm telling you, 24, 25, maybe 26 degrees and stifling with it. Not a, not a, not a smidgen of breeze. So I thought, what we're going to do, I wanted to push over to further than a Hill, but I knew Stella couldn't do it with that heat. I mean, she was struggling probably to get here, to be honest. And I've got to be careful. She's nearly 12 and a half, so I've got to be careful with her. You know, she's done absolute wonders going up and wonders coming back from Glenfinnan, so I don't want to ruin it. Sorry, I'm waiting for this breeze, these. So I thought, let's go, go to home, <laughs> our second home. I told you it's half holiday and half hiking. I'm having holiday as well. I've earned it. So that's what I'm doing in the future because by doing that I can rest Stella. And that way we can get out. If I push on day in, day out, she'll, she'll be dead. You know, I mean, she'll just drop on us. So I have to be use my common sense so hopefully you're hearing this as I say because there's a breeze behind us but anyway so I'm, I'm walking down I'm thinking I hope no, no one's there but even if someone's there I'll go in one of the rooms get the dogs cool because they really are feeling the heat and then I can sort things out and get the dogs in the river here and give them a good dunking and that's exactly what Stella did she went straight down the river and uh, Paddled, had a good swim for a couple of, t a couple of uh, minutes and uh, came out a lot much better. But the, all three are inside that buffet, absolutely worn out. And you know what my dogs are like, they don't normally settle, and they're normally running around, and God knows what. So they're worn out. Uh, I'm worn out, to be honest, I'm tired. It's a heavy pack carrying them. I, as I say, I'm guessing it was about 56, 57 pounds because all I had was a dehydrated meal couple of coffee sachets and a bit of cake last night and uh, had no lunch so you know what I mean it, I don't I doubt if anything's come, really come off the back at all but the dogs was getting lighter because I was using their dog food and the same with Rebel Rebels was getting lighter so that was good they were getting lighter packs but I was not really um, 
I was pre prepared for co cooler temperatures and conditions nothing like this so I wore heavy boots I got uh, dog jackets I got uh, gear that for the dogs you know to keep warm when, when, when they're resting and all this kind of stuff like blankets and quilts and <laughs> because they said it was going to be zero at, at night and uh, we haven't had that at all it's been cool but it's not been zero and uh, they're still saying when I was at Glenfinnan they're still saying it's 16 17 degrees and that's utter rubbish I just took a reading and uh, I'll show you in a minute and that's at uh, half past five well 20 to six so uh, but I must admit it is getting cooler now but I haven't seen a sun well I saw someone walking from one of the Munro's past past us as I was throwing the dogs in the river <laughs> He thought we were all mad because it was barking and screaming and I was shouting. <laughs> he must have thought, oh my God, thank God I'm not stopping at that buffer. But, uh, yeah, good call coming here. I can rest, Stella can rest, and we know where it is and we know all around the area and it's just a beautiful area, so I don't care if I come here a hundred times, you know what I mean? It's better than my house, I know that. <laughs> These views are much better than in the city. Um... So that's it. I'm just resting now and uh, chilling. Have a fire on later on again. I've just chopped some firewood about warm me out because I've done enough today. Um, no one's been in the buffy since I've been gone, so weird. It's been quiet everywhere. Just a few people doing Munro's, but uh, you don't see any campers, you don't see any hikers. I've seen uh, a few Cape rafters. That's why I didn't really want to go up towards a chill because anywhere around there is going to be busy with camping and uh, the buffet's going to be rammed anyway because the Cape Rafters use it. So, uh, yeah, they're, they've been out, but uh, I haven't seen anyone else. I saw no one on that pass. And as I say, the Cape Rafters won't come down to the afternoon because if they're setting off from Fort William and they're pushing on, from, I think they camp somewhere just short of Glenfinnan or just around that area. So even if they were pushing on from there, they would be would have been behind me. I set off about 10 to 10. So they're probably still coming in now. Some of them might even come out at about seven, eight o'clock in the evening. It's a good old trek that over the pass. It's hard work. The reason it's hard work is because it's so boggy it's so there's holes i did hey <laughs> before i do go i did fall over twice that's the first time in, in a long time that i fell over twice one i was crossing the river and there was moss on the stones and i saw it and i put my first foot on one and it was even though it was moss it was a good grip so i thought oh no, the other one would be all right no it wasn't <laughs> oh, i nearly went face down into the river so i braced myself and managed to stop it I just kind of put my hands out and luckily nothing got broken. Um, and then another one, I was walking, following where the people would keep rafters have been hiking in the bogs, coming down the side of that pass. And uh, I put my foot where other people have been put on their feet and boom, straight down to my knees. Had to pull my leg out, not my boot out, I pulled my leg out. Absolutely covered in peat and mud and God knows what else. Luckily it wasn't smelling. So yeah, quite funny that. But again, no injuries, so that's all that matters. Just probably a bit sore. Um, the worst one was I <laughs> got to this buffet. I said to Ro, "Come here," you know what I mean, because I wanted to take a pack off. She turned around and walloped me in the knee. I don't know what she hit me with. I think it was a tooth. Just she, you know, she had an open mouth and she just turned and hit me. Oh, she didn't do it intentionally. It was just bad timing. It hurt. So that's the worst injury I've had. My, my own dog injured me nearly. But been beautiful a few days. What's it now? Four days. Been beautiful. So that's it for us. Evening, chilling. Tomorrow, I ain't got a clue. Tomorrow's Friday, so it might be a bit busy. If people finish work and want to get up, don't they? So we'll see what happens. I was wrong. <laughs> it is still hot. That is uh, at half past uh, five in the evening. Well, twenty to six nearly. See, when the breeze stops, the temperatures get right. So you imagine what it's like at 2 o'clock this afternoon. Still creeping up. 
Unbelievable, isn't it? Madness. I've given up looking. <laughs> well, about 22 degrees. <laughs>